Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video. So welcome to my first champion guide in a very long time. And today we're going to be doing Gangplank. So if you enjoy this video, throw a like on the video. Maybe if we get 2,000 likes on this video, I'll continue to regularly make champion guides. But just before we begin, I just thought I'd explain how I do them, how it was going to work, that type of thing. Because I don't want to make the video too long. So the first thing that I'm going to do is break down all the preparation work. Runes, masteries, items, etc. I like to get that out the way. And then we're going to be talking in detail about Gangplank in the early game, mid game, late game. And then talking about some of his key mechanics. Examples like three barreling, where to position your barrels, that type of thing. So hopefully you enjoy. Again, throw a like on the video if you did enjoy this and want to see more. Okay, welcome to the Huzzy Games Gangplank Cheat Sheet. This is where I'm going to break down all basically the preparation work for Gangplank, hopefully pretty quickly. Uh, I like to get this out of the way and then move on. Now, before we bring anything into the screen, as you may be thinking it's a bit blank at the moment, uh, this is for a standard Gangplank build. So you can use this against anything, but you may want to go into more specific things if you are having trouble with certain matchups. Anyway, let's begin and bring over the rune page. Uh, to begin with. So as you can see, it is a standard root page of 9 attack damage reds, 9 armor, 9 flat cooldown reduction blues, and 3 attack damage quints. What this will give you is a okay early game in terms of AD and armor, but more importantly, it will give you 10% cooldown reduction. This is very important and we'll mention why later on. Okay, next moving into the mastery page for Gangplank, I recommend going 12, Ferocity, 18, Cunning with going Thunderlord's Decree. Yes, I'm recommending Thunderlord's as default, not Grasp the Undying, because the standard Gangplank in my eyes is Damage Gangplank, and Thunderlord's definitely helps you with that. Also, if people may think your early game will suffer if you don't go Grasp, I'll be mentioning something later on that will basically help with that. But just to give you some summary of what this mastery page will give you, yes, Thunderlord's Lords, a lot of damage. Next, 45% cooldown reduction cap. That's going to help you a lot because Gangplank relies heavily on cooldown reduction nowadays. Next is sustain from kills and finally execute damage. In the ferocity tree, it'll give you increased ability damage, helping your E damage, your ultimate damage, etc. And finally, just yeah, overall damage. Next is going into Gangplank's skill order. So just to say his overall skill order is pretty much always your ultimate, then your Q, then your E, then your W. The first six levels kind of follow this, but I will just mention if you are having trouble at level 1 and level 2, maybe take W at level 2 instead of E. It'll help you a bit sustain, it'll help you not get CC'd, and you know, they'll probably push it into the tower anyway, so you'll probably be okay. Next is Gangplank's ultimate upgrade, so you have three options here, and the order I recommend is Death's Daughter, then Fire at Will, and then finally Raise Morale. Again, this is standard Gangplank, maximizing as much damage as possible, so if you position Death's Daughter the best you possibly can, it will most likely do the most damage out of all three. And finally, let's talk about items on Gangplank. So first, let's talk about the early game items. Uh, the first thing to say, I am recommending building Doran's Ring first item. There are many advantages to this, but let me just lay them out very quickly. Doran's Ring gives you health, ability power, and mana regen on hit on minion kills. This allows you to have a great early game with sustain and staying in lane longer with the mana to last hit with Q. This is why you do not need Grasp of the Undying on Gangplank anymore because Doran's Ring was discovered to give you this great early game. So build Doran's Ring first item. Go back and buy, your first time going back and buying, should be roughly at the 1,000 gold mark or 1,500 gold mark. If you have to go back before that, you have to, but I'd recommend trying to hold out as long as possible. If you go back to buy at 1,000 gold or 1,050 gold, pick up a sheen. If you go back and buy at the 1,500 gold mark, pick up a sheen and a cull. A cull's a pretty good item on Gangplank because Gangplank is trying to do everything as possible to get to mid or late game, and cull will actually help with that. It gives you a little bit of gold it encourages you to farm so it's actually a pretty good item on gangplank you can still buy corrupting potion by the way i did put it there just to mention it but i'd say the doran's ring star is just stronger Next is looking into the core item pool. Now the main question to this will probably be, do you still build Triforce on patch 6.11 with the change that got rid of the crit? 
Yes, you do. Triforce is still a good item on Gangplank. What I just say is it's a change of playstyle. So Gangplank before very rarely used to go in for auto attacks on people, pretty much only when he had his passive up. Now the new item build is actually encouraging you to go for auto attacks when possible. So the new item build is basically focusing on getting to that 45% cooldown reduction in combination with your runes and mastery. So standard, and these are items that you pretty much have in every Every single item build boots and lucidity triforce infinity edge and the new addition phantom dancer this will give you more attack speed more crit and it just helps you all around now one thing to mention that people are starting to experiment with is getting rid of boots and lucidity and actually putting essence reaver in this will again get you to the 45 percent cooldown reduction but because you get rid of your boots and lucidity you can then purchase a different pair of boots so boots of swiftness merc treads whatever you may need uh, to just round off the build quite nicely now the situational items on Gangplank pretty much just make the rest of your build, whether you need to get a bit of tankiness, more damage, what you know, what type of item do you want, Bloodthirster, different, you know, Last Whisper item, it's up to you, it's situational, just build whatever is according to the game. Okay, the next part of the guide is going to be talking about Gangplank in the early game, mid game, and then late game, breaking it down on average, how are you supposed to play each part of the game? Anyway, let's begin with the early game. So I've already mentioned Gangplank is mainly a mid and late game champion, so his early game needs to basically let him get there. This is why you buy the Doran's Ring or the Cull in the early game, is to try and help you have a strong-ish lane phase to actually just get you to the mid game. So how you play the early game, pretty simple, is farm as much as possible. The 15% cooldown reduction that you start the game with from your runes and masteries will definitely help with farming. It will definitely help with sustain with your W. So use that to great effect. Now some people ask, can you play aggressive on Gangplank in lane? Yes, but it has to be calculated aggression. There are certain early game champions that can just go aggressive and not really think about it. Where Gangplank, you can't do that. Gangplank, you've got to think about your barrel positioning, whether your opponent is on a power power spike, whether it will screw you up, whether the farm is more important. So make sure you're always calculating your aggression and basically just go off an opponent's mistake. That is very much the way that I go aggressive on Gangplank. I won't entice aggression. I'll just look for it whenever my opponent makes a mistake. So if they stand on a barrel and I manage to get one off on them, if I get my passive fire on them, if I get a Thunderlord's proc on them, that's when I'll go for calculated aggression. And that's pretty much it. Now talking about mid game, mid game is where Gangplank becomes, I'd say Gangplank really, where you should be looking for aggressive plays, where you should be pretty much outscaling most top laners in the game nowadays, maybe apart from Jax and Aurelia, but other than those two, you can be very useful around the map, and again, this is where you're going to start using your ultimate, either for 1v1 kills in top lane, or global kills, we will be talking about that specifically in a minute. And finally, late game is where Gangplank shines. He's in his own. You should be playing stupidly aggressive. But again, calculate. You don't just want to run into five people on the enemy team. You want to be doing great barrel placements, a safe barrel placements. And hopefully, with teaching you the three barrel combo later on, you can actually get some pretty safe free damage on the opponents with chunking their health completely. Okay, next, I thought I'd briefly talk about the argument between whether you use your ultimate in 1v1 kills in top lane or use them around the map. Now, I can't go crazy into detail about this subject. I thought I'd just quickly cover it because it's a situational thing. Certain games, you can just snowball your lane, get 1v1 kills, and hey, you're a happy gangplank. And there are other games that you may not kill your 1v1 opponent ever, but you may be holding on to your ultimate a little bit too much. Gangplank Ultimate is best used when it's actually being used, so I'd recommend in most games look to be using it around the map unless you are snowballing in top lane. And you know, especially when you have the Death's Daughter upgrade, the first upgrade, you're going to be dishing out a lot of damage with that if you can position it correctly. And if you're positioning it amazingly correctly, you'll just get kills around the map, not even assists. Okay, the next section is going to be touching on the barrel tips. 
Uh, considering Gangplank now is a champion of barrels, I thought I'd just cover three basic tips. So the first one is going to be talking about its positioning. The next one is going to be talking about the quick barrel. And then finally talking about the three barrel combo. So let's begin with the positioning of barrels. Pretty simple. In the early game, you may want to position a barrel under your feet wherever you are farming. This does two things. Firstly, if your opponent engages on top of you, it gives you free damage straight away. They engage on you, you blow up the barrel. You have to be quick with that. But if you blow up the barrel straight away, they take damage straight away and the trade should go pretty well. The second thing it does is it actually should put people off engaging on you in the first place, which will help towards getting to mid game and late game without any problems problems in lane so it's both an aggressive thing if they engage on you but it's also a defensive thing that may stop them engaging on you in the first place next let's talk about the quick barrel now this actually took me quite a while to figure out and i'm quite embarrassed with this fact but you can auto attack your own barrels most of you probably will know this but a barrel has three health when it reaches zero it will blow up and it automatically reduces by two health after a couple of seconds of it being activated but if you auto attack your own barrel when it has three bars of health it will go down to two and then with its own timer it'll go down to one very quickly and this again if you do it very well if you do it very quickly can actually get you some very quick free damage also remember if you're in a massive trade and you manage to do this fairly well it will get your passive up it will get your fire passive up for your sword thus helping with the trade even more and finally let's talk about gangplank signature three barrel combo it's his kind of most advanced technique i'd say where you have two barrels already placed you fire your pistol at one of them and in the time that it's gonna get to the second barrel you place the third barrel and you can catch people by surprise and it may land you a cheeky kill here or there Anyway, that's going to be it for today's guide. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully it gives you all the information that you wanted. Uh, let me know what you think of the guide in the comment section below. Throw a like on it if you want more guides in the future. And what champion do you want me to cover next? Leave that all in the comments and I'll have a good look through. So thank you very much for watching everybody. Throw a like on it if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.